Hey guys, good morning. This is Mike with uh, AAR Customs, ILO Automotive Restoration. Um, yesterday, late, we got the uh, uh, main bearing clearances measured for Bill and Linda's Sunbeam Tiger engine here, factory 289. Neat little car, about the size of an MG. Um, Came with a factory 289 Ford V8 with a top loader four speed behind it. Had a uh, Dana rear axle. Neat little, uh, neat little car. Anyway, what we're going to check first thing here this morning is um, we got to check our, check our thrust clearance. It's very critical on a on a crankshaft to check your thrust clearance. Um, the drive line is constantly, whether it's an automatic or stick shift or whatever, is constantly pushing the crank forward. Um, there's a bearing that is uh, that the crankshaft is to ride on. There's a spec for that. Um, I believe it's between four and eight. I'll have to look it up. But regardless, we're gonna we're gonna measure it. I'm gonna show you how to do that. Um, on our little Ford motor here. The thrust bearing is, in a, is on the center main. Uh, if this was the equivalent Chevy engine uh, back in the day, 327, let's say, um, it would be on the rear main. Big black Chevys, early big black Chevys were uh, the same on the rear main. But regardless of where it's located, this is how you can check it. So first thing we need to do is we need to take the uh, main cap that, that has the uh, thrust bearing in it. Thrust bearing has uh, bearing material on the sides to ride on the inside of this uh, machined area on the crank. We're going to go ahead and uh, install it. Now I've got the crank just laying in here loose. You don't have to have all the main caps on. Uh, but you do have to have the, the, uh, all the bearings in so that the crank will sit flat. We're going to snug this down. Now, initially, we just want to run it up until it's just snug 10 or 20 pounds, foot pounds of torque. Uh, we don't want to crank it all the way down just yet. Because, and I'll show you why, main cap in the saddle on the block. Okay, then we're going to take, you can use either a soft hammer, uh, this one here is uh, made out of leather, it's old school. Um, you can tap the crankshaft backwards and forwards and that's going to align that thrust bearing with the crankshaft. So it's in its seat where it's supposed to be um, centered. Another way to do that would be to take a pry bar of some sort, screwdriver in this case I'm using, and go next to a web in the block and just pry it very gently on the uh, crankshaft. You can move it forward and backward. So now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and Torque this cap. Uh, the spec on the 289 Ford is, is 65 foot pounds. snout of the crankshaft. Then 
then we're going to zero this. Actually, first. Let's pry it all the way back first. Make sure you're all the way back. And then zero it. Then we're going to pry the crank forward. The measurement we've got. We have four thousandths. Okay, so I'm right at the bottom of the uh, spec. Technically, they say that's okay. I don't like running them that tight. Um, a bad taste in my mouth for tight thrust clearances. First engine I built uh, was back in high school. I was 16 years old, still cutting my teeth. Um, put a ton of money, well, when you're working for $3.65 an hour at White Castle, it don't take a whole lot to be a ton of money. Regardless, first engine I built, uh, the thrust, I didn't know any different, I wasn't measuring stuff, I bought new parts, I had machine work done for at a uh, uh, respectable machine shop, I assumed everything was fine. I just assembled everything according to the book, but didn't check all my clearances and everything. Like I said, everything was new, so I was like, well, it's got to fit. And um, I got about maybe eight to 10 hours of run time out of that engine. It took out the thrust. Um, burned up the crankshaft, burned up the block. That was, uh, it was an expensive lesson, so. I like to try and put the thrusts in the middle of the spec. So we're going to do a little, uh, little modifying to this thrust bearing. I'll show you guys how to do that. Hang tight. So I've taken the crankshaft out of the block, um, I've got the thrust bearing here, I've marked the shell halves both uh, with the sharpie mark, uh, indicating forward on the uh, block so that I can keep these together when I do this procedure. Uh, I want to keep them relative to each other. Um, so that when they're installed back in the block that both halves have been um, combed, if you want to call it that, um, together. Now, um, on our initial measurement in the block, we had four thousandths. Um, I double checked the spec in the book. It calls for four to eight for 289 Ford and so technically four thousandths is, is in range, but uh, that's on the low side, right at the minimum. Um, I would feel more comfortable with it closer to the sweet spot. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna shoot for at least five thousandths. Um, that'll be a nice clearance for this thrust. Um, so, Initially, we're going to measure, I'm going to take a pair of dial calipers here. Um, we're going to measure the thickness of the, um, the thrust side of this bearing and get a baseline. So that's 101 thousandths thick in this particular case. On the top one, together. Make sure that the uh, they're together in relationship to the way they will, will be back in the block. We're going to take 
take some light oil, uh, WD-40, whatever. Uh, here I'm using marble mystery oil. Um, we're gonna lube up our wet or dry 220 paper that's on a flat surface. In this case, I'm using the back side of my bead roller. Um, it's half inch steel, uh, pretty hefty piece of metal, um, and I know it's flat. Check that it was straight edge. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to put our bearing halves together here. And we're going to set them together flat on this paper. And we're going to make little circles. Counterclockwise, clockwise. Just don't go in one particular way. I'm going to try and work that all the way around. See how much we've actually owned up of here. Picked up a half a pound. takes a little while. This is a fine paper. You don't want anything real rough. We're going to take our time. We're going to do it right. clean this bearing. Um, oh, first we're going to switch over to a 600 grit paper um, to polish it out even smoother. I won't bore you with those details. We're going to do exactly the same thing. I'm just going to go to a 600 grit paper um, and then we will reinstall and recheck. Be right back. Okay guys, once you get the thrust bearing honed, clean it back up, clean it very well, um, you don't want any grit in your motor. Go ahead, uh, install the crank, the same setup as before, and we're going to recheck the um, thrust clearance. In this case, we have gained what we needed. We have put the, uh, the thrust clearance right in the middle of the spec. So now I'm feeling a lot better about this. Um, I hope that this has helped someone out there. Um, engine building is a technical thing. You do have to follow specs. and But, you know, technically uh, anybody can do it. You just got to... Got to make sure that everything's right. Um, if you do that, then chances are pretty good you're going to have a happy little engine. And this one's going to be a happy little engine. 
I will talk to you later.